Hello and welcome to WTF, where we help you transform food in your kitchen. I'm Janie. I'm Roman. And today we're talking all about how do you take a regular supermarket roast and turn it into the most delicious dry aged roast in your own kitchen. Roman, do you want to talk a little about like dry aging and what exactly it does and why are we so excited about it? People love dry aging, and uh, one of the main reasons why uh, people do love dry aging is because it gives the, the meat a different flavor, mm -hmm. different flavor profile. Uh, so what, what is done is usually the meat is dried on the outside and that allows the interior to develop all these great flavors. Mm -hmm. um, I, I personally, I love dry age. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm more of a 30, 40 day guy instead mm -hmm. of a 60 day guy because you know, as it ages, it develops these flavors. Sometimes it can get like a really like blue cheesy mm -hmm. kind of flavor, which is awesome, you know, really good. But, you know, for me, not so much. And so I like a good 30 age uh, dry age, dry yeah. age steak. And traditionally, dry aging is very prohibitive for someone in their own kitchen because it usually comes with dry age cases, exactly. which are available to restaurants and, you know, very expensive. However, what we have here is this cool thing. It's called the Umai Dry Bags. Awesome bag. Pause, yeah, pause for shots. <laughs> and uh, what it does is it's actually kind of a cool little thing that lets you do this at home exactly the same process as restaurants and butchers. Can you, do you want to talk a little bit about, you know, what the Umai bag is and how does it work? Yeah, my bag is awesome. It's, a, it's, a, a, it's, a, it's kind of like a membrane. Mm -hmm. And so what it does is it allows you to make dried aged steaks in your fridge at home and no contamination and you don't get any mold. Like one of the big keys of, of dry aging is temperature and temperature control and trying to keep those nasty molds off the meat. And this does a great job of doing that. So, um, so with the bag, the bag lets moisture out of the bag, but not into the bag. And so that allows it to dry age and it doesn't allow the contaminants to come into the bag. So one of the cool things about the Umai dry bags is that they make a whole line of products, not just for roasts, there's steaks, there's charcuterie, there's sausages. And we've actually done videos on all those. You can check them out in the links in the description below. If you're like, I would love a dry aged steak at home, this is a great way to do it. So, but let's get into this particular roast that we have here. Do you want to talk about when we did it, um, how long it's been aging for? So this has been aging for about 42 days. Um, the uh, Umai company, uh, they give you a par parameters from 28 to 45 days, but you can go as long as 80 to 90 days mm -hmm. um, if, you, if you wanted to, to choose so. Uh, 28 days is their minimum, so once you get, you get past the 28 day, you start to develop the flavors in it. Uh, so we, we're gonna cut this bad boy open, and then we're gonna put up against a regular steak. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna, we're gonna see if, if those flavors actually really develop yeah. in your refrigerator in the Umai bag. Yeah, and uh, one of the first things I'm noticing before we even open it is that the dry age one is smaller, right? And that comes from the moisture loss. It's going to be a little yeah. bit smaller, but it's not tiny by any means. No, not at all. Like uh, that was like one of my biggest concerns when um, dry aging. I was like, all right, you're gonna you're gonna lose all this meat. I mean, is it actually worth it? You mm -hmm. know, you know what I mean. And so, I mean, I go to restaurants and you know I'll pay up to ninety dollars for a really beautiful, nice steak. Um, and for me, that's always worth it, you know, because you, you have all the amenities of a restaurant and people serving you. Um, and doing at home, I'm just wondering if it's gonna if it's if it's gonna be worth yeah. it. To be honest with you, let's check it out. Let's crack it open all right. and see what we have. Okay, here we go. All right. It's got a nice bark on it. Great, nice smell. It doesn't smell at all, actually, to be honest with you. It's very, very light. I'm getting a little whiff right here. It's, yeah. it's got a little something. It's got a little, it's got, it's got a little funk. Yeah, but not too much, not mm -hmm. too much, and not and definitely not bad. So. Yeah, not a, not a, I don't mean funk in a bad way, but just in like, a, it has that like, yeah, like you said, like that little blue that cheesy little blue, H, yeah. H smell. Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we have to trim off the pellicle uh, before we get this in the oven to go against our, our round here. So I'm just gonna trim this up a little bit. And if you're ever in a restaurant and you're like, why is the dry aged steak so much more expensive compared to a fresh steak? So this is why you're losing the volume of it. So the restaurant's serving you, a, it has to, you know, it costs a restaurant more in order to give you that same size steak. But then also after it dry ages, they have to trim off the pellicle. Exactly. And actually one thing I'm noticing on the roast that's different from when we did the steak is when we did the steak, I felt like there was a fair amount of pellicle to it. This is actually not that much, I think. Yeah, no, not at all, actually, mm -hmm. to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, so we're not going to lose too yeah. much. Yep. I mean, we'll definitely lose, as you can see. 
um, we are losing we are losing some of the state yeah. but not not that much not not, not as much. much as I thought it was going to be if I'm being honest and the pellicle is also still good so you don't need to throw that away what like, you can do is you can also grind that up too yeah. you could add it into your like a burger or whatnot because mm -hmm. it's what packed full of flavor do. exactly so this, I would, I would call this minimal loss. Yeah, this is not, not that much loss at all. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure you're wondering, okay, you know, like if I want to do this, how much is this going to cost me? So we just picked up that fresh rose. What, what did we just say? That was like six bucks? Six bucks a pound. Yeah, and that's for Angus. You know, you can get it for as low as like three or, or you know, if you have a special deal going on at your local market, maybe even less. So when you're looking at it, this bag itself, this particular package, it's... $22 for three bags, which means that for every roast that you do, it's costing you an additional $7 for the whole roast. But think about, you know, what if you go to a restaurant and you buy a fresh fresh roasted meat versus dry aged roasted meat, you're paying five, six, oh, five, times, six, yeah, five, six, six times. Five, six times the price, yeah, yeah. for sure. So for seven dollars to be added to an entire, I don't know how much is this, three pounds, four pounds? Three, uh, this is three pounds, three yeah. and a half pounds. So you're adding like about two dollars, a little over two dollars per pound to have dry aged meat, which is a huge, it's a huge like savings. Yeah, big you know, time. If, you, time. if you're into the quality of the dry age. And we'll let you know at the end of this video if we think it's worth it. All right, so I think this is, uh, I cleaned up very nicely. Cool. Uh, so it's ready to go into the oven. Yeah. Before so. we do that, the one, the other thing I'm really noticing, and if we can just pull that next to the fresh roast for a second, is the fresh roast got this like bright, light pink color and in comparison the dry roast got dry. so deep yeah mm -hmm. it lost a lot of moisture but mm -hmm. that's what's going to intensify the flavor mm -hmm. all right so let's go yeah all right um i'm going to pass roman a couple of thermometers including our favorite combustion and right. there's also this meter 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 the meter all right all right here so you go there you go that's instant all right we're care. not yeah so we're going to go ahead and and the reason why we're doing this is because we want to make sure that we're really comparing apples to apples, which means that we're going to cook both of these roasts to the perfect internal temperature of one. 135. Yes. So we don't want to be like, well, we overcook one and therefore it's not as good. So definitely we want to make sure that we, the only thing that we're comparing at this point is the quality of the meat. All right. So now we are going to put this in to a 350 degree oven and we're going to be looking for an internal temperature of 135. All right, it's been approximately an hour, 15 minutes, and now we have two gorgeous roasts sitting here, and we cannot wait to cut into them, show you how they came out. Um, so let's get right into it. First impressions, Roman, what do you think? Uh, love it. I love the, the, the color of this. It's, uh, it's, very, it's very, um, very dark amber. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of liquid pooling out of this one. Mm -hmm. um, this one, a little bit more, not too much. I do like, I love the color of this one a little bit more than that one. Yeah. As you can see, uh, this one excreted a lot, a lot of the moisture from the inside. And this one has not, see how dark that is as opposed to mm -hmm. how light that is? Yeah. So um, I think it's going to be, a, you know, quite a difference in, in the flavor because of that. Yeah. I also noticed that the dry aged one, like, kind of tightened up, almost like it's about to fall off the bone when you cut, not, yeah. there's no bone, but like it's about to fall but, apart but, yeah. when you cut into it. So I'm really interested. To see how it's gonna go. Which one? Let's let's do the let's do the fresh one first. Let's do the fresh yeah, one first. Okay. All right. So we'll get the uh, thermometer out of there. Okay. See, look at all that loss right there. Yeah, and you can kind of tell. I can tell by the way you're handling the meat is like a little tight. Yeah. All mm -hmm. right. So let's. I mean, it is because we use the thermometers. It's still a perfectly, still perfectly cooked roast. Cooked. It's a nice and medium it's rare in the middle. Be, it's still going to be delicious. All right. And we're just plating it with a little bit of mash. And what's this? And some uh, some light gravy. Okay, light gravy. Cool. I'm put this back over here. Mm -hmm. All right. And now, drum roll, please. That, that was the late. Sorry. <laughs> so let me try it. Hold on. Wait, say it again. Drum roll, please. All right, so now we're going to cut into the one that we had um, dry aging. Okay. So I'm very excited to do this. 
I've never used a mob bag, so mm -hmm. this is a first for me. Mm -hmm. And um, you get to see how that looks. So first impression is it doesn't look as pink as the other one. Nope, it does not. Oh, but look at the juices look in there. Look at the juices in there now. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. All right. Actually, let's get one for you. Thank you. And one for me. And then we'll do our taste test of this. Cool. Ready? So, okay, let's we'll start with the fresh, right? Start with the fresh first. Okay. Right. I, I like mine with a little bit of gravy, a little mm. bit of mash. Okay. There's not, not too much not going bad. on. Not too much. Um, it is a little tight. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's fine. It's fine. I would say there's not a lot of flavor going no, on. Yeah, no. It's a little bit, it, it's pretty bland. This is the type of meat I would drown in the gravy. Exactly. And then yeah. eat. And then yeah. eat it, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that would be yeah. sufficient. All right, let's try. Try a little bit of this guy here. Okay, this is our dry aged roast. Mm. Yeah. You get those mm -hmm. accents of blue cheese in it. Like, mm -hmm. it's a huge difference. There's so much flavor happening it's, right it's now. It's a huge difference. You, it's, there's, there's a lot of umami. Mm. Um, like I said, you get like that light blue cheese. It's not quite gorgonzola. Yeah. But and I don't like cheese flavors at all, but this is really yeah. nice. I'm, yeah. I like, I'm not a huge fan of like, 60, 90 day aged, um, dry aged steaks. I've had them before and they're, you know, they're okay, but you know, I'm more of a, like I said earlier, I'm more of a 30 day, 45 day guy. You get that light blue mm -hmm. cheese in there and this this is, has exactly like that taste that I'm looking for. Yeah. And it's super light, it's not too funky. It has that nice aroma, nice smell to it. But the, it, it, the difference between the two steaks, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's night the and Grand day. Canyon. Yes. It's the Grand Canyon. I mean, this has flavor. And this, you know, is bland. Yeah, this I would eat on its own, just a, like a little bit of seasoning, yeah. a little bit of sauce. This is on, it's a little bit like eating cardboard. Yeah, so. pretty, yeah <laughs> pretty much. It so. reminds me of a school lunch. Yeah, <laughs> but you know what? If someone was like, "Oh, this is your basic, you know, three dollar a pound, six dollar a pound, you know, meat," but you just wrapped it for a while and then it became this, I. It's definitely worth yeah. it. For it's, me, it's worth it's it. It's a huge. It's a huge, huge improvement. You can tell because we're going to go back for I'm seconds. I'm definitely going to go back for seconds. Mm. Mm. So good. That was one of my biggest concerns. Mm -hmm. Would it be worth it? And it is. It's yeah. definitely worth it. It is sure. super good. Check out. I mean, we don't have, this is just, I think there's just salsa. There's no recipe, but check out all the other Umai bags and the Umai episodes and the links in the description below. You know, let us know if you like it, how it goes. And um, until next week, from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie. I'm Roman. Well, this is going to be lunch, guys. All right. It is lunch. Yeah, you can cut a couple. I know you're going to want to take more than one bite. Um, I probably will, too. So. <laughs> I'm definitely going to take more than one bite. I might eat the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs>